All right. All right. We're rolling on TikTok. We're on YouTube. I'm in a little different setup today. We'll see how this goes. We'll see how I like this. But how are y'all doing? YouTube, how you doing? TikTok, how you doing? TikTok, say hi to YouTube. YouTube, say hi to TikTok. Follow on TikTok if you're on YouTube. YouTube, y'all know how to do it. Follow us everywhere. Mix and mingle. Say hi to each other. Uh, but we're here for another... What do y'all want to call this? Let's think of a name for this. Because we already do pre-PT chats on Thursday nights. Um, I don't know what you want. Live? I mean, we do live streams all the time. I don't know. If you guys come up with a name that you want to call this, uh, maybe Q&A. We can just call it Q&A session. Uh, let us know. And we'll make this something, something fancy. But as you guys no uh drop your questions in early so i can get to those as early as possible to talk as much about your questions um as possible uh as you like then we'll get rocking and rolling because you guys know for those of you who are new um you'll see but for those of you who are coming back you'll also see that once the questions start rolling it really starts rolling and we just get into a nice rhythm a nice groove and we go for close to an hour just depending on how you guys ask questions and and how it flows and what the feel is around an hour then we call it a day and and we, and we head out so that's it that's it we are here for you we're here to help you get into pt school for those of you who are new to us my name is casey the co-founder of pre-pt grind is joseph and we help you at pre-pt grind get into pt school without wasting time money stress effort tears anxiety all the stuff that you have to go through outside of just the little application process we help you with all of that plus the application to get accepted not just not just to get accepted but to become physical therapists, because school is just in the way. You're not doing. You're not watching my live stream to get into PT school. Who cares about PT school? Ain't nobody care about that. You care about becoming a physical therapist. So that's what we help you do. Wherever you find us, wherever you're watching. So that's really it. I was not on here last Sunday, but I was on here consistently the couple Sundays before. Uh, so that's when I usually try to get on here. So if you want to catch a live stream, if you want to catch one of these live, of course, they'll always be on replay, especially on YouTube. Um, look, Just look out for a post. I usually post it on Instagram on Sunday afternoon. Say, hey, I got time tonight. Let's go live. Let's chat. Let's do it up. Um, then you guys can meet me here. If there's another way that you guys like to get contacted about these, you can join our text community at textpreptgrind.com. Just go there and you can join our text community and I don't know, we can text you there as well. So that's what it's all about. So Sundays, sometimes Wednesdays, if I got time Wednesdays, I come on here and chat live with you guys. So let's get into it. What questions do you guys have? How can I answer them? How can I help? What can we go over? Or should I just rant on a topic that I want? Then call it a day. Because I can pick any topic. I can rant about any topic. We'll call it a day and we'll head out of here. So got some questions rolling in to get us started. So let's go. Let's go. And if you're on TikTok, if you're on YouTube, like I said at the beginning, cross paths. We're everywhere. So if you're on TikTok, Head over to YouTube, drop us a like, then you can head back on to TikTok if you love TikTok more than YouTube as well. So that's it. Let's get into it. Let's start with the talk here. What PT schools don't require the GRE? So what you should do and what you can do is go ptcast.org and you can go to the schools. Look up the schools, the program directory. And there you'll see some filters. You'll see a few different filters. And one of them you can choose is GRE. Yes or no. And there you go. <laughs> Pretty as simple as that. So I would start with PTCast. Then if you want um, if you want to filter out more schools with some filters that PTCast does not have, then you can go the extra step and get PT School Probe. P-R-O-B-E. PT School Probe. And you can use our discount code PrePTGrind. Uh, and you can get like 
I forgot the percentage, 10, 15% off. It shows it there. Uh, and you can filter more aspects of schools that you want by price, location, letters of rec, all that stuff. But start with PTCAS, start with PTCAS, and uh, just click no for schools that don't require the GRE. And there you go, there you go. Let's see here. Do you have any good study tips uh, for studying anatomy and solidifying the information? Yeah, so with all studying, um, this isn't going to be specific to anatomy. It can be if you choose it, uh, if you choose it to be, but it's not specific to anatomy. So the study tips or strategies I love that I've used as a pre-PT and in PT school um, are um, the pom uh, Pomodoro Technique, Active Recall, the Feynman Technique, and Spaced Repetition. Okay, those are the ones I've used. Active recall, the Feynman technique, spaced repetition, and the Pomodoro uh, method. So to help you solidify that information, those are the strategies I would use. Because what you might be using right now that's not solidifying the information, you might just be highlighting and reading passively over that material in anatomy. When in reality, you have to study how you're going to get tested. You're not going to get tested by passively reading. You have to actively recall the information from your head onto that test paper without looking. So why not study that way? So, um, yeah, those are my study tips. I'll do one more TikTok. I'll answer from YouTube. Uh, then I'll um, then I'll come back to TikTok. Um, let's see. What do you think would be the best volunteer opportunities to do or look into? Uh, so I did a YouTube video on this not too long ago, but um, what I recommend doing is whatever you want to do, whatever you like, and whatever's easiest on your plate to do. So I could say, oh, the best thing to do is travel to Madagascar. That's not realistic for like 99% of people. So what can you do? What do you like? Do you like running? Do you like races? Do you like children? Do you like hanging out with senior citizens? Do you like being a referee or an umpire? Do you like helping out at a soup kitchen? Can you cook? What do you like to do? What can you do? What is feasible in your local area? What can you put on your plate with all the other stuff you have to do? That's where I recommend starting. And then from there, then you can make any experience stand out. I don't care if you go to Madagascar or you give toothpaste to somebody on the street. It doesn't matter. You can make any uh, experience stand out. And for more details on that, uh, I recommend um, our YouTube channel. My YouTube channel on how to stand out using experiences. Watching that video and you'll be all good. You'll be all good. All right, let's get to YouTube real quick. Then I'll hop back over to TikTok. Uh, when trying to create a relationship with the program you're interested in, is it appropriate to email a faculty member you're interested in connecting with? Yes. First answer to that question is yes, it is appropriate. That's the main point of it. So yes, it is appropriate to email uh, the professor or faculty member you're interested in once you do some more research on that program. Uh, next, does PrePT Grind have a video on programs in the process of getting CAPTI accredited, or can you explain what to generally expect if you're applying to a program in the process of accreditation? Yes, I do have a video on that. If you type in PrePT Grind accreditation, um, I break it down for you. And if you're on TikTok and you don't like YouTube or whatever, just scroll down a little bit on TikTok. I do a shorter version of that video on accreditation. What is it? What does it mean? Uh, so on and so forth. How to find schools that are accredited, that are not, that are in the process, that are on the ABC list of the process. So Jason, yes, I got you. Just type in or just search our YouTube channel, scroll down a little bit, and um, or just type in pre-PT grind accreditation in that video is exactly what you're looking for. It's exactly what you're looking for. Um, so if you, to answer that last part of Jason's question, if you are in the process or if you are applying to a school that's in the process of being accredited, basically you just need to know that there are different levels to accreditation. And accreditation is just the school's application process. So you guys know how you're applying to PT school. 
the schools have to apply for their accreditation to be stamped for approval so that you guys as the customers go to a safe accredited you know they pass the application process they're a good they're a good school so that's really what accreditation is there's a long process to it i explain it in that video good question very good question uh but definitely check out that video just type in pre pt grind accreditation and we got you and we got you all righty let me give TikTok a little refresh because I think there's more questions about to pop up there. YouTube, what's going on? I see y'all. Four people on YouTube, 15 on TikTok. Last time near the end, like it was a big influx. I was like, whoa, what's going on? What's going on? Uh, so that was pretty cool. Let's see. TikTok refreshes. It usually does. We'll give it another minute. But if you guys got more questions on TikTok, ask away ask away but that was a good uh question on accreditation so to go deeper into that in the meantime um with accreditation there are developing programs oh there we go <laughs> there we go they are the questions on TikTok. boom they just came up uh but there are different levels basically uh developing programs that are looking for a chair or who have um um hired a chair then programs in the process of being a candidate to being accredited, then programs who have passed the candidacy, uh, candidacy stage, then programs who are officially accredited. So just check out the video. You guys know how to do it. All right, let's scroll back up a little bit here. All right, let's see. Can't work in my opinion. Um, if you're still on Dylan, let me know what you mean. If you mean accredited or if you cannot work in PT school, let me know if you're still on. Um, then I got you. Any good summer jobs that could help with getting into PT school to be more, to be a more, or to be more fun for an SPT? Any good summer jobs that can help with getting into PT school or be a more fun, or be more fun. Okay, so jobs, jobs to help with getting into PT school. Kind of like that volunteer uh, opportunity example. Any job you want. Literally, any job you want. I was an Uber driver. I was a drum teacher. I played the drums. I was a golf caddy. I know plenty of people who were waiters, PTAs, massage therapists, musicians, and finance. You can be anything. You can do anything. Whatever you like to do, you can be a DJ. I don't care. It doesn't matter. Anything that you do can technically help you get into PT school. If you use it what right, if you explain it right. And we have an essay lab workshop coming up later in the day or sorry, later um, in June. So later in a few months uh, coming up. So just look out for that. It'll be blasted everywhere. So we'll take care of it. But any job, any job. My question for you, if you're still on, what do you like to do and what is what might be easiest for you to do? that can help you sustain that kind of income as a pre-PT, as an SPT, and maybe even after you get a job as a physical therapist. Is there anything that you can get into that you like that can help you have that other stream of income while you're working or while you're in PT school and while you're working as a physical therapist? So that would be my answer to that question just to have you think a little bit more instead of me saying, oh, the best thing to do is get a PT tech job or the best thing to do is be a lifeguard. I mean, for some people, yes. For other people, maybe, maybe not. Maybe not necessarily. So just expand your thinking. Don't, don't be so locked into health stuff because uh, it doesn't have to be that way. Realistic to have a job during PT school or does PT school take up all of your time? Yeah, so piggybacking off that question, um, it depends what your definition of a job is, okay? So if your job is, if you're thinking of a job in PT school as being, I, I'm going to be a PT tech or, or a nurse or, or like a CRNA or a CNA or something like that, that has very strict hours, anything that has very strict hours, that's my definition of work. Can I do that in physical therapy school? Most likely not because your days are going to be taken up with classes, lectures, labs, studying, work, eating, sleeping. It's not going to, it most likely cannot work that way. But if the jobs that you have are flexible around your schedule, 
then yes, it could work. So I described myself as a golf caddy and Uber driver. I played the drums, social media director. I was a staff writer. I was a uh, publications director. All of that was done on my time around PT school. So I could work in PT school. I worked all through PT school. We started pre-PT grind while we were in PT school. So yes, I could work because I made it work around my schedule. But if your definition of working in PT school is something different, is more strict, I have to be at the clinic from 12 to four, then maybe you cannot work. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna get one more TikTok question then I'm gonna come over to YouTube and um, then I'll answer some YouTube questions. Um, let's see. Do we offer study packages? Uh, we do teach you study techniques in our accepted system. Uh, that's our coaching program, but right now we don't offer any study packages. If you have any ideas of what you mean by that, let us know. I'm curious, send us a DM, just make sure your settings are open so I can respond to you. Uh, but yeah, if you're, if you want to let us know what you mean, if you're interested in letting us know, I'm interested to know uh, what you mean by study packages. Do you mean like a tutor? Do you mean study strategies? Do you mean like, oh, can we have a group study session over anatomy and chemistry? Curious to know what you mean. Um, send us a DM. Curious. All right. YouTube. There we go. There we go. Uh, do you provide other resources slash support for current PT students? Um, so that market is pretty much taken care of. There's a lot of different uh, accounts, programs, blogs, YouTube channels, um, PT school itself um, caters and supports to PT students. So we've thought about it a little bit in the past month or so, two months of doing something like that. We're still kind of thinking of it. So Jason, to answer your question directly, no, we don't have any current uh, support like on our greater pre-PT grind platform for current PT students, just because there's so much out there um, that helps PT students already. We're trying to think of creative ways to find our niche in that market if we will go that way. But for our accepted system coaching program, we have certain things uh, in place, certain different streams of incomes and and affiliate stuff that they are a part of that can support them and you, they can use as resources as PT students. So, yep, yeah, we're thinking about it. Good question, we're thinking about it. All right, one more YouTube question, or actually I'll get two more YouTube questions in then I'll come back to TikTok here. Oh, here's an easy one. Do you need to take chemistry? Yes, you need to take chemistry. Um, advice on getting observation hours in an inpatient setting. So depending on the state that you're in, they're either going to be a little open to it or they're going to be completely closed off because there are so many layers, especially in an inpatient setting. They have to go through their manager, then that manager's manager, then this director, then they have to meet on a board and it's just so much. Then there might be state or local or county or regional policies. It's just a lot to do um, if they're completely closed off to it. So depending on your state, you might be able to get some volunteer hours, maybe not. Um, but what I recommend doing is two things. One, you can try and get a job at that hospital as a transporter, uh, a tech, um, a janitor if you needed to be, whatever that is, you can try to get a leg in the hospital by getting a job there. Then finessing your way in to say, oh, get to know the PT and see if you can get some hours in that way because you're already employed there. It might be easier that way. Then the next way is just going up to them, going up to their front desk or emailing the manager or of the PT department or whatever, and just saying, what is your policy for observation hours in this hospital, in this inpatient setting? And leaving it at that. Don't say, I need hours, please. I'm trying to get into PT school. They'll be like, so what? We have this, that, and that in place and we're not taking anything until four months from now or whatever. Then you're devastated. Just go in saying, what is your policy? I'm a student. I'm interested in this. Um, I need some hours. Uh, as you know, you were a pre-PT before. I just want to know how things are working at this location for now. And that's it. Just leave it at that. Just leave it at that and see what they respond with. That's all you can do. That's all you can do. A lot of this is out of your control. Fortunately, a lot of things are opening back up. So we'll see. We'll see. Good question, though. Uh, one C would one C plus bring my application down. Uh, looks like you're saying you have a 3.6 GPA so far. 
First year of chemistry didn't go as planned. Should I consider retaking it? Still have three semesters to go, so on and so forth. Uh, right now, I would put it on the back burner for you. And I would also ask you a question. Is that 3.6 your prerequisite GPA? Is it your cumulative GPA? Do you know the difference? That can sway my answer a little bit depending on how you respond. But um, I would leave it on the back burner for now. One C plus is not gonna destroy you, especially if your GPA is high and continues to rise. If you get better uh, or you continue your good streak of grades over the next, what was it, three semesters. So you should be good. Put it on the back burner for now. Just keep crushing it. Uh, with the semesters you have left. All right, good stuff. Um, hello, starting my first year PT program. Any advice for a jam-packed first year? Um, just go with the flow. Take it in stride. Don't don't beat yourself up if you fail a quiz. Don't beat yourself up if you get a C on a test. It's not the end of the world. Like if you get a C or if you get an F, you need to bounce back. But don't go sulk in your corner. Don't, don't cry about it because another test is coming. And this is going to go on for the next two, three years. So the best thing you can do is make sure you have a strategy for how you learn the best and hunker down and perfect that strategy. So as you get further along in PT school, you can get in the zone. Things can slow down a bit. And then you can take all these different elements and put them in place and spin multiple plates at one time. So that's what I would do. That's what I would do. Get to know how the year is going to go. Get to know these, this teacher, their schedule. Get everything organized. Make sure your strategy is on point. Make sure you're not wasting time. And at the same time, don't beat yourself up if things fall apart, if things don't go as planned. That could be a win for you. Because, okay, this doesn't work. Let me switch and find something else that does work. Okay, studying and walking outside doesn't work for me. Let me be in a secluded library spot. Let me block off two hours and that's what I need. If you're like, that doesn't work for me, go do something else and find, find what works for you. So in your third semester of your first year, while you're on clinicals, while you're studying for this and that, then you know how to manage it. You can go on spring break. You can go visit your boyfriend and girlfriend. You can go travel. You can work multiple jobs like I did while balancing PT school, but it just takes a little practice just like anything else. You just have to get acclimated to it just like anything else. So that's what I would say. Uh, yes, you need to take chemistry. How bad are the student loans? Is it realistic for PTs to make six figures? Yes, it is realistic for PTs to make six figures. I don't care what anybody says. Yes, it is realistic. Is it going to take a lot of effing work? Yes, yes. So most of the time when people get all up in arms about this, when people say, yes, you can make six figures in PT, they're saying it because Either they don't know how to do it or they don't put in the work to make the six figures as a PT. You can make six figures as a PT if you put in the work, either working overtime, working more hours, creating new streams of income, creating a business, doing your own business, negotiating your salary, taking a different setting, um, working in a rural area or a place that will pay you more. Yes, you can make six figures as a PT. Is it going to come to you working in a big city, sitting on your butt in a outpatient clinic? As a new grad, no, no. But if you have, if you're in an outpatient clinic as a new grad and you have something on the side and you have this income, yes, you can have six figures as a PT. If you put in six figure type of work, don't get it twisted now. <laughs> don't get it twisted. It is very possible to make six figures if you put in six figure type of work, just like with any other career. Any other career. It's funny. I actually on, on TikTok a few times when I'm scrolling, I see um, physicians, dentists talking about this concept as well. Like having multiple streams of income, having real estate or crypto or stocks, and them saying even their higher salary, active salary, is bigger than PT. They're still concerned if their active salary goes away. They still need something else just in case. They need something passive or something else on the side. Don't be hunkered down to just one stream because if that blocks you off, you're done. This is just, now I'm going into like financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor, but it's interesting to see that other, like it's not just PTs talking about this, it's other healthcare providers as well. So yes, it is realistic to make six figures. Um, how bad are the student loans? It just depends on the school you go to. If you go to our YouTube channel and type in physical uh, pre-PT grind low cost schools, I have a whole video talking about lower cost physical therapy schools. 
So if you can keep your debt low and make six figures, PT is a great career. So good question though. Very good question. I'm senior in high school going into athletic training and physical therapy. Any advice? All of it. All of it's advice. All of it's advice. Uh, but keep your grades as high as possible um, and things will be so much easier. Start early. Keep your grades as high as possible. That's not fancy advice. That's not, there's no secret. There's not, oh, oh, do this. You're going to be athletic trainer? Oh, do this. And that is a good thing. That's a good thing that there is no secret. If you keep your grades as high as possible and start early on this process, either by following us or doing your own thing, you'll be great. You would be great. Uh, how many hours of leisure time did you have every day in PT school after studying? <laughs> I, I honestly don't know. That's a good question. I'm going to have to go back in my mental archives and think. Um, I made leisure time whenever I could or whenever I had leisure time. I didn't have a lot. Um, I was usually always working, either working on pre-PT grind or um, going back home to Chicago to work on the weekends or working out. I didn't have a lot of leisure time. Um, yeah, I didn't. I don't even know how to answer this question. Even now, I don't have a lot of leisure time. I go to work. I come back home and do pre-PT grind work. I go work out and that's it. But this is what I asked for. This is what I signed up for. Um, so my concept of this question is a little different than most. Uh, but I made leisure time whenever I needed to. If, I, if there was a spring break or a winter break or I wanted to travel somewhere uh, or I just physically or mentally needed a break, I watched a YouTube video. So you have time. The main thing for this question is you have time to either have leisure time or to work or to travel. or You have more time in school than you think. That's how I'll answer that question. Um, I don't know specifically how much leisure time I had, but I did have a lot more time than I thought in PT school, especially once you get in the zone and you're like, uh, I got this test tomorrow, but I got a quiz in four days. All right, I know how to work that. Let me study for this test for two hours. All right, tomorrow I can slack off a little bit. Then three hours or two hours before the quiz, let me study up on something. Like, it's school. School is school, you know? School is school. Um, so yeah. Do you have any tips for studying uh, anatomy? I think I got that one. Any tips for first clinical rotation? All right, I think this is gonna refresh. If I missed any questions on TikTok, um, let me know or just ask it again. I'll be more than happy to answer it. Oh, I snap, I can invite people. Oh, snap, YouTube. If you're on YouTube and you wanna chat with me on TikTok, TikTok, if you wanna, I don't know, if you guys can um, hop on here, uh, I don't know how this works. I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to look at that. This is pretty cool. I can invite people. If you guys can request to invite, that would be cool too. But yeah, I'm gonna have to look at this. This is dope. If you guys are on, just wave and say, "Hey, I want to come on." If you're not shy, um, but that's cool. I just saw that at the bottom. If you guys want to come on and chat with me on the screen and have that Instagram split screen. Let's see if we can make it work. That'd be pretty cool. That'd be pretty cool. All right, one more on TikTok, then I'll jump back over to YouTube. I think TikTok refreshed. Um, but you were asking clinicals, right? Yes. First clinical rotation. Um, so I would kind of look at this as more so getting along with the team and your clinical instructor. That's it. What can you do to help the team? What can you do to make your clinical instructor's life easier? Then after that, then you can get all into the nitty gritty stuff that you'll do with your clinical instructor. But for the most part, it's just you getting to know the patients, you getting to know the team, you helping out, you not messing up the flow, you just seamlessly coming in, having all your safety precautions there, and just soaking it up, asking questions, kind of viewing it kind of like observation hours. Of course, you know a little bit more and now you can put your hands on the patient and now you have to document, but approach it like you're in observation hours because you're still trying to soak in as much as you want, especially, or as much as you can, especially if it's your first clinical experience. So I'd approach it first like that, first couple days, then after that, um, your CI, your clinical instructor would help you through the rest of the process. All right, let's hop to YouTube real quick. 
Uh, I don't imagine that PT interview process changes very much. Will you be making another video providing more tips on physical therapy interview besides your older content? Yeah, I can make some. I can make some more interview tips. Um, as interviews get closer, interviews will be more so like September-ish. So probably I'll make some. I got you. I got you. I make more interview tips. Then as well as TikTok, you'll see more interview tips as the interview stuff gets closer. But you're right. You're right, Jason. It is all the same. Interviews and interviews and interview online, in person, group, multi, mini interviews, written stuff. It's all the same. But yeah, I can make some more updated, updated um, interview stuff. Um, YouTube, do you have any tips for how to be a better student observer when working at an outpatient clinic? Yeah, I got two things for you, Kayla. Two things. If you're looking to be a better observer, TikTok, we got a question on YouTube asking about that. What I'd say is number one, ask. And number two, seek. So ask, then seek. Okay, so number one, if you're just there, just take the low-hanging fruit. And ask them, what needs to be done? How can I help? Is there anything I can fill in for? Is there anybody out for the next week? What can I do to make your life easier? What can I do to make your life easier? That's it. Then number two, if they just say, oh, no, it's okay. Just do your thing. Just observe. We don't need any help right now. Great. Perfect. Observe. Take your notes. All that stuff. Ask questions. All the good stuff. Then pay attention for the next few days or the next week. Is the phone ringing too much? Is the trash piling up? Is it dirty in the office? Are there patients waiting in the front? Are they swamped? Are they really busy? Are the bathrooms dirty? What's going on? Is there anything that the clinical instructor or the, the clinic director is really stressed about because you sat in on a meeting? Is it cancellation policies? Is it getting reviews on Google? What do they need? What are you paying attention to? What can you seek to fill a need for? Then once you do that, then a week later you say, oh, Mr. Clinic Director or PT in charge, whoever you're under, I noticed this, I noticed that. Is it okay or how can I help to make sure the phone, uh, the phone isn't ringing off the hook? Or can I answer the phone? Is that appropriate? Or where can I put the garbage? I've seen it piling up over the last week. i see the laundry needs to get, whatever that is, ask first. If they tell you something needs to get done, do it. Then seek. Other than that, you are making their life easier, and that's all you need to do. That's it. That's it. Um, so, yeah, that's what I'd say. Because most people are going to be like, oh, take notes. And that's great. Take notes. Oh, ask questions. Great. Yes, do all of that. But you're asking how to be a better student observer? That's what I would say. Uh, one more on YouTube, then I'll hop back over to TikTok. Uh, tips on how to build relationships with professors to get a recommendation letter. Hey, Jason, if you're still on, drop that link for him. Drop that link for, for Joy. If you're still on, Jason. But go to PrePT Grind, how to build relationships, and I'll pop up. That's what you should do. Um, I have a whole playlist on how to stand out in three minutes or less. But I take you through that whole process. Basically, you want to get to know them better. How would you build a relationship with anybody else? That's how you would build a relationship with a professor, with a faculty member, with a clinical instructor, with a physical therapist. How would you build a relationship with anybody else? You would ask them questions. You'd get to know them. You wouldn't suck up to them. You would see what they like. You'd see what they're proud of. Then from there, you talk to them about that. You ask them questions. You encourage them. You compliment them. You build a genuine relationship, then after that, then you ask. Then you ask. So that video will help you a lot. Then also on that playlist, um, I have a letters of recommendation video as well, Joy. So that should help you. That should help you as well. All righty. Back to TikTok here. How do I stand out at my university to get a better chance of getting into their PT program? Um, kind of the same thing I mentioned with the professor. Um, oh, boss that man. Oh, y'all usernames are cracking me up. Um, so how to stand out. So I do have that whole playlist there on YouTube about how to stand out in three minutes or less. But with standing out, 
um, a lot of things that you have to remember are is how do you just stand out in general like and what I mean by that is what stands out to you mr. I'm gonna just say the last part of your name man four five three what stands out to you man four five three what stood out about just let's talk about pre PT grind account my account what stood out to you to make you either follow click hop into this live stream what stood out to you was it the creativity with the videos was it my consistency was it the discipline was it how I talk to you was it me reading your mind whatever that is once you figure that out try and be that way so that you can stand out to that university because they are people the university is just people it's not, oh, how do I stand out to this automated system? No, there's people there. So if something stood out to you, that same thing is most likely going to stand out to them. It's just how it is. So once you do that, then you're on your way to standing out more or standing out better. So there's a whole, like we, we do whole pre-PT club things on this. This is our whole platform on how to stand out. But that's where, that's where I'll say so I can get some more questions. First, I would say, what stands out to you? If you're going to a university, is it the way somebody dresses? Is, is it how they smell? Is it physical? Is it their smile? Is it how much research they did on that program? Is it how much they know about the profession? The list goes on and on. What would stand out to you? Then do that. So, good question though. Starting PT school next week, what should I do the week before? Um, you can get Swift Notes. So if you go to the link in our bio, get Swift Notes. There's a 10% off link. So you can go scroll through that. I mean, you can you can flip through that. But other than that, just relax. You got a week left of sanity. <laughs> like, like relax. Watch some Netflix. Play some video games. Go to the beach. Uh, get Swift Notes. Link is in our bio. If you want, if you guys on YouTube want Swift Notes, um, go to our TikTok bio or actually it should be in the description on YouTube. If you scroll down a little bit or go to one of our other YouTube videos, scroll down. It should be in the description for Swift Notes. So yeah, check them out. Do you have uh, do you need a master's to really pursue being a PT? No, you do not need a master's. Um, you can check out my YouTube video on that as well. But no, luckily you do not need a master's for PT. What PT school did you go to? How did you like it? I went to Andrews University. Um, it was a normal PT school. It was great. It was cool. I have a lot of friends there. Went there for undergrad as well. It was fine. It was a, tra a traditional school, three years. It was normal. It was normal. Uh, so it was good. It did what it was supposed to do. It gave what it was supposed to give. Uh, PTA graduate, what do you recommend to help study for the boards? Um, so I use Dr. Kyle Rice, uh, the PT Hustle. So if you type in the PT Hustle or follow him on Instagram or Facebook, those are his main platforms, especially Facebook. Uh, that's his main platform. So if you type in Kyle Rice, the PT hustle or just type that into Google you'll find him dope he did a GRE course for us as well to help you guys with the GRE it's in our accepted system so yeah he's he's the man that's who I used what do you recommend to study for the GRE uh, you can use anything um, Magoosh Manhattan prep Kaplan um, ETS is the main one I'd say first because that's the free one they make the test so any of them you can use you can use any of them they're all good they're all great pick your, pick your poison they all do the job um, Greg Matt is good as well he's on YouTube so yeah they're all great that's a good thing 3.3 uh, GPA applying for PT school in the fall or waiting a year um, you can apply now it just depends on the school you want to go to and what GPA you're talking about so if that 3.3 is a cumulative GPA or if it's a prereq GPA you just have to know those differences so that you apply to schools that are in that range. So if you're saying, oh, I wanna to go to this school, but they only accept or they averagely accept 3.9 students, you can apply there. Could you get in? Possibly, they could say yes, but what's your, possi or what's your probability? It's just not as probable as somebody who has a 3.9. So if you wanna to go to a school like that, then you might wanna wait and retake some classes and get closer to that 3.9. If you're applying to a school that averagely accepts 3.4 students, then you can apply now. Non-traditional student retaking prereqs, how do programs look at your old GPA? Um, so this kind of blends in with the question before. Um, each school can 
say how they want to calculate your GPA. So one school, school A can say, we take only your prerequisite classes, that GPA from that, and we take the highest grade if you're retaking a class. So for a school like that, they're going to be factoring in a higher GPA for you. If, the sc if, an, if school B is saying, oh no, we only take all of your classes and we calculate them all up just like PTCAS does, then your older grades are going to come into effect and I guess technically bring you down from the way you're asking this question. Um, so that's how they would look at your older GPAs, um, if that makes sense. So either they're gonna take your prereq GPA, either average those retakes or take the highest or calculate them all up like PTCAS does and just factor everything in. Or the last way is just take the last 60 credit hours, the, like the last classes you've taken over the last year or two, and take that GPA. So that's how, I hope I answered your question. If not, just ask it again and I got you, but that's how that works. That's how it would factor in. Can't work a job in PT school, at least that's my opinion. Well, that's fine. Nothing wrong with your opinion there. Um, going to PTA school, I know it's different, but I wanted any advice, uh, any advice before I go. Same thing. Same thing as the people starting PT school soon. Take a break, celebrate, go to the beach, have fun with your friends. You can get Swift Notes as well. Link is in the bio. 10% uh, off if you want it. If you're really like, oh, I need to do something, I need to do something, uh, get Swift Notes, uh, flip through it, get acquainted with how things work, uh, what's going on there, and and you'll be good. You'll be good, but don't stress out. Don't stress out. Uh, let's see. Uh, let me go back up here. All right, let me get all these questions here. Then I'll hit YouTube in one second here. All right, I'll come back to TikTok in a second. How do you feel about hybrid programs? I have no problem with hybrid programs. They're fine. I did a YouTube video on that. They're fine. No problem with hybrid programs. They work. They work, especially since what happened, since the lockdowns and everything, everybody was private. Um, everybody was hybrid over the last year. So, <laughs> yeah. Hybrids are fine. Hybrids are great. What should I start? When should I start applying if I'm a junior? I have a YouTube video on this as well. Um, but if you're a junior, this is going to depend on. Oh, let me see. You're asking more questions. Don't have all the prereqs for the classes done, but I'm about to take the class. So this is where it gets very um, nuanced for your situation. But technically, most students, if they wanna go straight through, apply before their senior year, the summer before their senior year. So that's how that works. But you still need to have all the requirements done. So if you don't have them done, or you will not have them done, a majority of them done by the time you apply, then you need to wait and get those requirements done, then apply. But if you have like one or two classes missing, that's usually the standard of how it works, um, then you should be fine. But it can get very nuanced. If you need more insight, just send us a DM. Traditional student retaking prereqs. Oh, I did that one. Let's see, let's see. Um, okay, I did those, I did those. Thank you for all the advice, it helped. Good stuff, glad it helped. Thank you. What are different settings for PT? Oh Lord, the list, <laughs> the list goes on and on. Um, well, I guess the different settings, because I guess settings and specialties could be different depending on how people think of this. But the main two settings are outpatient, meaning you are not in the hospital, then inpatient, meaning you are in a hospital or something hospital-like, to keep it as simple as possible, okay? So outpatient is not in the hospital, inpatient is hospital or hospital-like, okay? So within those different settings, there are different specialties. And the list can go on and on from uh, cardiopulmonary to pelvic health, to sports PT, to neuro, to vestibular, to TMJ, temporal, uh, temporal mandibular problems, uh, you can specialize in different joints. This goes on and on. So that's how I'll explain it for now, just to keep it short and, and sweet. But those are the different settings. And within the different settings, you can 
you can specialize in a plethora of things. Then you can go into academics, you can go into politics, you can work with the APTA, you can do advocacy, you can go into research and do uh, statistical studies and stuff like that. So the world is open to you. Uh, I think I got that one starting PT school. What do you recommend? Athletic training. What do you recommend? Athletic training or physical therapy? Just depends what you want. Just depends what you want. How does the job market look for you? What do you want out of life? What do you want financially? What do you want career wise? Who do you want to work with? Do you have an entrepreneurial spirit or not? Do you want to work a nine to five or not? It just depends on on a lot of things, uh, but both are great. Either one can work. You can be rich and successful and have a great family and have a great life with either one. Uh, just depends what you want. Do you need a master's? No, I think I got that one. New PTA grad, what do you recommend? Somebody wants to come on. You can come on. I, I just have to figure this out. And it doesn't let me search for people. So it doesn't let me, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to try this next time. If you know a way to come on and like request, then you can come on. But what I'm looking at now is like, I have to scroll through suggested hosts. And I don't know if these are like verified people and I don't see you on here. So I'll keep looking, but if there's a way you know of how to request to come on, then yeah, if you're still on, you can come on. But I have to work on that. Um, how many hours are good for shadowing and volunteering? Uh, depends on the school. The school could want 100 hours. They can want 50. They can want 20. Um, so it just depends. It depends entirely on the school. Because they can say, hey, Duke University wants 200. Then Baylor can say, we don't care what Duke University wants. We want 20. So um, just make a list of your schools. Or you can go to PT School Probe and see what they say there. And let's go from there. But don't don't stress yourself out saying, oh, this school wants 50 hours, but let me get 3,000. It's not it's not worth it. Uh, I really want to go into sports medicine. Um, I have a TikTok on on sports PT. But the good thing about physical therapy is that it doesn't. There is no direct path for a majority of things that you want to do. So in PT school. You're just spit out as a generalist. You're spit out as an entry-level PT. And if you want to do sports medicine or go back to med school or do or work with the sports team, you create your own path to do that. Yes, some sometimes there's residencies to help you learn more about it, but there, the residency isn't going to place you with uh, the women's Olympic soccer team. Like, that's not the residency's job. So it's nothing like there's no placement for that you have to make your own path you have to create it which is a beautiful thing uh, with all the different areas in PT that you can go into so so yeah if you want to go into sports medicine start now start networking with people who are in sports medicine join the um, sports uh, section of the APTA start following people who work with athletes on Instagram who are PTs just start liking their stuff sharing their stuff if you have something you're doing invite them to your pre PT club so on and so forth um it's easy it's so easy here it's so easy on social media join one of their live streams and start asking questions listen to some podcasts just type in sports physical therapy and find some people um who do that and, and you'll be good you'll be good start start soaking it all in uh when are we doing the essay lab most likely mid june so the pt gas cycle opens up june 15th we'll probably have it um the weekend before the weekend after most likely the weekend after. So yeah, it'll be blasted everywhere though. So we'll let you guys know. You won't be able to miss it. We'll send you emails and stuff. COVID, would it only be okay to have 100 hours? It might be. It might be, again, that depends on the school. Some school might be an asshole and say, nope, nope. We need 102 hours. If you have 100, that's it. Nope. Then hey, it's the school's decision. It's the school's rule. Once you know that, do you really want to go to that school, though? But you should be okay. You should be okay with 100 hours. Just depends on the school and what they are lenient with, what they are not. 
Um, freshman next year, starting seven year DBT program, iPad laptop recommendations, whatever you like. A lot of people swear by it. Oh, you can, you gotta get the new Mac. You gotta get this iPad. I loved, you know, the Microsoft pad. I love this. Whatever you like now in undergrad, get an iPad, get a laptop. I used my laptop, my same laptop that I'm on YouTube with. I use that in a notebook and pieces of paper. That's what I use. Some people swear by uh, the new iPads and, and Microsofts that you can write in and write on the lectures with. However you study best, whatever you do the best in, great. I love it. So um, whatever, your, whatever your company you rock with is, um, get an iPad for them or, or whatever you like. Rehab aid similar to PT tech? Yes, it's the same thing. It's just semantics. It's the same thing. What job did I have before becoming a PT? Because PT, because PT aid takes like a year of classes for the program. Um, so you don't, from what I understand, you don't need to take any classes or certifications to be a PT tech, unless your job might want it from you. They might say, no, we only take PT techs who are certified from this company, then hey, you gotta do as the Romans do. But for most places, you don't need any certifications or any any programs to become a PT aide or tech. Um, so the jobs I did before becoming a PT, um, like I said before, I did I did a lot of stuff that revolved around my um, my life and what I had to do in school. So I was a drum teacher. I played the drums. I was a social media director, publications director. I drove for Uber. I was a golf caddy. Then we started pre PT grind in PT school as well. So, and I made it through PT school. Many other people I know worked in PT school. People have families, uh, spousal support, of course, but yeah, that's, that's what I did. Um, any tips for PTA school? Um, study strategies, make sure you study the best way you know how. The way I studied that helped me a lot was active recall, spaced repetition, the Pomodoro technique, and the Feynman technique, which is teaching other people. So PTA school, PT school, pre-PT, undergrad, uh, those are, I don't know if it's the most researched um, study methods, but I know there's a lot of research behind it, proving it to be better than passively just reading stuff and just highlighting and just passively reading. Uh, so that's what I did and it, it helped a lot for me. So yeah. All right, guys, good stuff. I'm gonna wait a few more seconds, see if there's any more questions from TikTok. Next time I'm going to see how I can bring people on or invite people. Because I, I have seen other people on TikTok doing like a split screen. I don't know if this was like any, like if they were using different software or anything, but it seems pretty cool because you guys know how Instagram does it. They have a split screen and stuff. So, or we can start doing this on Instagram as well. Then I can have people on as guests. So I'll look into that, but good stuff. Good stuff, guys. I'll wait. All right, we got another question here on TikTok. Then I think we'll be good. I think we'll be good. Uh, do you think I should stop going to college and join the Air Force? Um, that's a big question. You got to, I need a lot more context to that question. Uh, it depends on a lot of stuff. I've never been in the military or in the Air Force or in any of the armed services. So that might be a question better suited for somebody who is in or who has been in the armed forces um i'm not sure and i have no problem saying i don't know <laughs> i don't know so i'll need a lot more context to that question or i highly recommend i'll refer out i'll refer out this question and say i highly recommend asking someone who's been in the armed forces we have some people in our accepted system and many people in our Facebook group, in our big pre-DBT Facebook group who have been in the armed forces and are in PT school now or applying. So I would ask that question in our group and you, you should get some responses there. Um, there we go. All right, you two, we got another one here then I think we should be good. What do you think about home therapy, uh, home therapy for PTAs? So home health for PTAs. What do I think about PTAs working in home health? I'm guessing that's what the question is asking. Um, I have no problem with it. 
Home health is one of the higher paying um, specialties or settings. Uh, that's another setting I missed, uh, home health. Uh, but yeah, that's great. Nothing, I don't know what you've heard in the past or what context or baggage this question might have with it, but yeah, I have no, if you wanna, if you're a PTA or becoming a PTA and want to work in home health, uh, that's great. That's great. I know there's some proposed Medicare cuts for PTA services that might be coming up. So you might want to look into that. So just Google Medicare physical therapy assistant or physical therapist assistant Medicare cuts. Uh, you might want to look into that. But other than that, it was great. I have no problems with it. No problems. All right. I think we are good. Look out for me. We can do this again. Next Sunday is Mother's Day, but everybody should be done doing stuff by this time tonight. So I might hop on. I might be busy. We'll see. But just look on, look out on Instagram or send us a DM of how you like to be contacted for this stuff. Um, hey, we got to share on the live video. That's what's up. Uh, but yeah, thanks for joining, guys. TikTok, hop over to YouTube. Give YouTube some likes. YouTube, follow us on TikTok. Uh, good questions tonight, good conversations, and look out for me possibly next week for doing this again. All right, guys, take care.